this is a great point to switch gears and create a road spline. Right, so let's control W to duplicate this. We'll call this spline mesh demo two. Let's open this up, and pull it over. And basically right now we've got a duplicate of what we just built and we can get rid of, we can keep some things and we can get rid of th some things. So let's get rid of this and get rid of this and then what we're going to do is we're going to change this instead of adding a static mesh component we're going to add a spline mesh component and we're going to plug that in and re-plug this return value into the set material and set mesh and then turn on manual attachment again and also in this case I built a, a super fast road piece and it was just simply a 100 uh, length by 400 wide um, cube essentially um, not too wide um, well, let's create the rest of the nodes that we're going to need all right so we're instead uh, and now we're going to set the location and distance along the spline and set the direction and distance along the spline. Let's start plugging that in. So get location and distance. Yeah, distance along the spline. And also get direction at distance along the spline. And we're going to need this twice. And I'll explain that in a second. But I'm just going to copy and paste these, plug these in, and we're going to need these twice because we're going to set the start and end point of the spline mesh components. So we're going to have to drag this off here so we know, it's, since it's context sensitive, set start and end. And so we're setting the start and end of our spline mesh. Let's plug this in. And this is going to be the uh, initial start position, and this is going to be the start tangent, and then this is going to be the end position, and the end tangent. And we can set these all to world space, otherwise we're going to be offset on the spline and then we can start plugging in. Um, so for these first two, we can just simply use the distance along the spline that we had before. And then for the end point, it's going to be the distance we calculated plus an additional chunk of space. So it's this plus an additional, so it's float plus a float. And really all we're doing is just taking this information plus an additional chunk of space. And now let's plug these into the distance of the final, the end. And let's see, what's the final step? Well, we also need to set collision enabled to collision enabled. Okay, let's double check to see if everything's sort of working here. We could even comment this out so we're like, this out a little bit. All right, great. So let's try it and see if it's working. Oh, we've got a, a missing piece of like, what does this need to plug into? It needs to plug into here. All right, so let's drag our new spline mesh demo out. Oh, it looks like we could choose a different kind of texture although right now we've got road um, with the rock texture on there and so you can see it's working and uh, the other thing that we didn't do yet let's double click and reopen this is we didn't really set up 
uh, anything to we created this uh, we, should, we can create a I mentioned in the intro that we're going to set up a tangent modifier so, and the tangent modifier it's going to be a float so really quickly what that can do is drag this down here and just do a vector so these end, start and end tangents we can multiply um, vector times float and so we want oops I want the end tangent plugged in there and the start tangent plugged in here and we're going to multiply those times this tangent modifier. The start tangent and the end tangent. And it looks like we need to replug this in because I unplugged it by accident. And what this is going to do is it modifies the tangent so that um, the tangents where these two pieces are. Um, where the pieces are connected, uh, there's a there's a tangent, um, and the tangent modifier that we're going to implement uh, will allow us to kind of smooth or adjust the smoothing the smoothing of the tangent. So we need a we need a value plugged in. Otherwise, as you can see, like a zero is not giving us a result we need unless we want like railroad tracks, which is kind of interesting, but not what we're going for. And so I'm going to make this. Um, um, oops, wrong one. I'm going to make this tangent modifier public, and I'm going to set the default to since uh, our mesh is 100 units long, 100 should be a good starting point, but we're going to probably want a value longer than that. So we can try. I mean, you can sort of see um, a little bit right now, um, and if we modify. You can see how it modifies or sort of pushes that uh, information around a little bit. And so the spacing is also a little bit off since the space of the road is only um, 100 units long. But anyways, it's working. And um, we could, um, one thing I also wanted to sort of point out is that if you have curves that are too tight, you can definitely break this, but there's, a lot of great flexibility in this uh, workflow. In addition to the flexibility in this workflow, I want to point out um, a, other workflows that are possible with this. So let's go back to my spline tutorial. Additional workflows related materials. Uh, the blueprint spline content examples in um, that you can download. There's quite a few additional things you can do with splines, right? You can um, we just sort of demonstrated spline mesh components, creating objects along splines. Um, but you can also do things with like particles moving out, particles kicking out of splines. We can have like how splines can be used as a path for a spline mesh to move along. Um, the, the example is a vine growing out of the ground. It's kind of cool. Um, also, there's a landscape spline. So within the landscape components themselves, um, you build up a mountain, but you can add roads a lot more easily if you use a landscape spline integrating that way. So in summary, let's just quickly go over what we um, what we did. We went over and we sort of broke down the code into different chunks, and we showed two specific workflows, uh, splines with discrete objects along them, some randomization. We added uh, spline meshes uh, that were all then connected, and we showed how we can sort of use the tangents to smooth over the texture a little bit, turn on collisions, and showed some additional resources. Awesome. All right, well, that'll wrap things up. Thanks so much for listening.